you sleep. Mm-mm. Oh. Um, I just gonna tell you that I love you. I love you too. What you doing, laying down? No, just getting up. <clears throat> oh, that's my first voice of the day. Sitting up here going over these documents and stuff. I won't go back to sleep. I've been up since four. I ain't took my nap yet. Actually, I got What time this. is it there? Eight o'clock. Oh, girl, it's late. It's late for you, but I've been up since actually three thirty. And I need you to take me a nap and I've been trying to go back to sleep and give me a power nap, but I haven't went back to sleep yet. Oh, that's who I better take. Look at around all this work need to be done around here. I got lazy granddaughters. My mouth look like a disaster. Oh. Ain't busting both up. Man, I don't feel like climbing these stairway to heaven. They'll be, they be alright. I tell somebody, I say, oh, they'll be alright with Nolan because Nolan ain't nasty. Mm-mm. Nolan ain't nasty at all. Yeah, it's okay. My work cut out for me because they both lazy. They both lazy. They both lazy and they put stink. Both of them. <laughs> both of them. That's because you talked about Larry Orr when you was younger. That's why. Well, if that's the case, all of us should have some stank and keep it. <laughs> 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 you can't put that on me. Stank, he stank, Alex stank. Mm-hmm. Alex fucked it. <laughs> TJ Bunky too. Yeah, he stank. Stank and Alex stank. Be here for uh, one night or no two nights 
and you wind up sitting in my house three weeks and you told me I ain't got to go because the law states you a lie. I bet you I'll shoot you. I bet you I'll shoot you tonight. Come out, dude. Now, I'll show you the law. He <laughs> said to put her out of my house because she was not. She was not. She would not leave my house. Oh, that's the California tricks. That's the stuff, the stuff they pull when they're in California. They spend one night at your house. They now considered residents. Yeah, and that's why I just see. Um, she want a breakfast sandwich. Uh, okay, so go go put the. Uh, what kind of croissant? She want a sausage and cheese croissant. Um, oh. She just wants black coffee. Oh. That's what um that's what her little trying to tell me. But she told the police. She trying to um she trying to kill me like they like like she um she killed um uh, her nephew, and I was just like, I had told the head tell the police, I had undo, I, I live in Texas, how did I kill my nephew? That girl wasn't right, that girl wasn't right. Well, I know, you ain't telling me, I got accused of killing my daughter, my son my daddy, my brother. So I know about being lied on and stuff. I, I don't even care no more. Uh-uh, that's all I like. Oh, I know you got to go. I was just wondering because I know she, um, I know she ain't reptile. Well, they sent for her to re reunite with her daughter. Oh, that story I got, Drew was flown to Texas to reunite with her daughter. And she didn't deserve to be with me because she had the right to be with her mother. And Sharice refused to go. I mean, it's just crazy. I wouldn't let Sharice go. Because it was not, that was not, I, did, I didn't experience still the same thing. I wasn't being involved in it, and I got through in the middle of it. Because um, Sharice just came to my house. I ain't had nothing to do with that. How did Sharice get there? About her grandma. I'm her grandmother. Hey, you, know, you, know, you know who I'm talking about. Her, her other grandma. No, she don't have a other grandmother. She have a, you mean her great grandmother? Mama, you know you know. Honor me as her grandmother because she affectionately called mama grandma. And so that's what confused the whole matter. And that's why then people banned me from the Social Security office because they see Sharice as that I lied, proclaiming to be Tyree's mother. When she, my mother is Tyree's mother because Sharice called her grandma. And so when we say stuff like that, and yeah, I know, but the system don't. The other people didn't know the difference. And because they didn't, they ruled against me in their own judgment. And now the system want me to bow down to them to get a check for my granddaughter. And I got to an answer to all of these rules. I got to, if I buy a at this part, well, I don't understand because I know Mama went to think to the court, uh, to the whatever, to the Social Security people, stating that she's with you and you are her maternal grandmother. And this just happened. And they 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 sent the uh, some some kind of notice or something to Mama uh, to verify uh, something about you. And Mama stated that because I see the papers came to my house, and I told Mama. Um, because I told her, you need to do the right thing. I don't care. I don't want to hear none of that, whatever stuff, but you need to do the right thing and you need to repent. And that, that's what I'm going to say to you. I love you, mama, but what, what, what happened, you wasn't right. And I'm sorry. I, I don't agree with it. And I ain't on nobody's side. I said that, and I still, um, agree with it. And I say the same thing. I said in your face, I said in mama's face, and I say, said in whoever's face. That's her grandchild. Whatever problems and stuff is going on, 
Noni can handle it. That's Noni problem. Let her have her grandbaby, and you shouldn't be in it anyway. And Mama excuse she said the reason she did that is because I told her, I told her that when I was in California with you, she had me out there hoeing. Like you had me out there hoeing. I said, Mama, I ain't never told you no stuff like that in your life. But Noni ain't had me out there doing nothing. I'm Noni gonna make me hoe. So that's a lie. You you alive, and I told her that, and so I didn't agree with it, and that's why. So when them papers got sent, them papers just got sent in, something about the verification of who you are. So, mama, you got to do the right thing. You die and you leave this earth. You better do the right thing. That's not right. Well, I don't care. I, I don't. I didn't agree with it. She was in my house, but I wasn't gonna stay in the streets. And, and, and um, so that's so that's that's that part. I, I don't. I, and the same thing. I it was hard to go to court because they still got my address as a wrong file. And you had to go to court, and you need a verification. I bet you I verify something because I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just baffled because it's the same thing Monica Trent did. And the family knew all the time that Lex's name ain't know nothing about no Maurice Simmons and Monica Trent. And when my daughter died, them people got the money for Alexis and she never saw one penny. And I wasn't her grandmama. And I got locked up, Paula. And they, them people sent me to 43 years saying that they was kidnapped, beat, raped, and strangled. Because when one family member say, Noni is the grandmother, because they all went off of one person's narrative, mama's. So my family was willing to see me sit in prison for 43 years. For a damn lie. And now you say your mama says I you can't say me because I ain't never know this part until you just said it. That's because when I was trying to tell the people, me and Tyree been hollering for years. Nobody would never listen to us. We was already already tried and convicted in the minds of other people who prefer to believe a one sided story. And so when the frustration mounted up in us, we frustrated. And everything was verbally combative because we were never heard. I knew what my son was going through, just like y'all, all these years. Out of all the time Tyree been crying, you just now learning that a jury is a crystal meth head. Chris was hey, but I've never been around a jury. I don't know. Exa I know what Tyree said. Exactly. Yeah, but I've never been around her. Exactly. And having nobody been around me since mama accused you, me of pimping you out 40 years ago. Yeah, so I was like, you know, I, I've never said, I've never told Rita Bell that. So the whole point is, Paula, if that was 40 years ago, and that's the last time I've been in real contact with family since you came here 40 years ago, the family have not been around me to know who I have become. So the narrative is, that's the whole point right there. You hit it right on the head. The family have a concept of me, of the yesteryears, and don't see me develop. When, and, but you got to understand, when I smoke crack, my sister sold it. My daddy sold it. My mama condoned it. We all lived in a house full of substance abusers. So how come I'm the only one that nobody never forgot that did that? I jumped up, went in the military, came to California, went in the military, cleaned my whole life up and turned it around. And I'm just remembered from being a substance abuser. Because I remember Lisa making that comment. That I was pimping, being what? I said, these people are crazy. Because Lisa's position was pimping who? Lisa. Lisa had the same story. In other words, Mama, Lisa got mad and told Mama back in the day. I mean, about I have my own mind. What do you think I'm a fool that I would have known he had selling my body? Did I, I did I sell my body when I was at home? You know what I used you to sell your body here. So why would I sell somebody else's body? I just come to California. I became a reckless madam, cracked out. But I got college degrees, retired from jobs, and I don't know a crackhead that graduated from college. Now, now they could have graduated and became a crackhead, but not one that went to college under the substance.
under the influence of substance abuse. So I don't understand how my family kept my name ragged out for well, decades. You can't say your family, just say people, because I, because I'm part of your family, and I ain't kept your name ragged out. Okay, well, I just look at how uh, three generation was destroyed because of, of the tongues. Because yeah, now nah, I now nah, nah, that you can say, and I will agree with you on that. Because nobody knew nothing about me but lies. Stay in here. Nobody. All they did was assume my life and presumed it. And that's ugly. That's ugly. Good morning, Mommy. Good morning. Thank you, Auntie. You're welcome, baby. Love you. Love you too, baby. Okay. You going to work? No. Oh, you off? Oh, that's right. You a teacher. I forget. You on vacation. <laughs> See you, baby girl. Oh, wow. I just look at the fact that, you know, like I told Mama, like I told Mama, gun and after Monica Trent did this, lied, falsified re police reports, had me arrested, said I kidnapped my own kids when she inadvertently did the kidnapping. <laughs> and just took over. Here's a woman. Her and, her and uh, a juror mama was crazy as hell. Right, a juror mama took my son's kids and played them like they were candy uh, bars in a store. I pick and choose. I want this one. I, this one can go in the system. You took a man's kids and played them like they were flowers being picked out of a car. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. The coffee filters, the drawer, it's on the shelf to the right. They, they want coffee cream. Wait a minute. It's right there on that shelf, girl. Mm. Same house with me that never took a stand and testified and said that I 
accused me of those accusations, but I got tried and convicted. I got railroaded in the courts. Teddy was behind it. It was like this. The universe had a bounty after me. And coming after me because people had natural hatred in them for me or to see Noni destroyed. It, it, like I told Mama, it's, oh, you, you got after me, but the, the results affected the kids, not me, because I'm too strong for this. It's, I, don't, I don't care how many spirits or demons or imps that the enemy send my way. I serve a true and living God. So walking in the power of my faith and my strength, if no weapon form was going to be able to consume me. So in that, my grandbabies innocently became consumed because I couldn't be overcome or overtaken by the madness. And so my granddaughters, our bookends, it started with Sharice and with, with Alexis or Sharice's death and ended with Sharice and Tyree's death. Named after her auntie. And so these are the bookends of how the system allowed their lies to overcome me and the system. See, like I, I, my whole point is this I see what family did, I see what strangers came through because, and just mm -hmm. take advantage. One, the only way Monica Trent was able to infiltrate this matter was through the source of the family. Because Monica Trent didn't know nothing about me or how to reach me or Alexis. I, I always reached out to her, keeping her abreast of Alexis, because I always knew and believed that that was her granddaughter. Alexis was never established between neither father. And part of what people weren't looking at is the whole picture. My, I, I went, well, everybody know Javon. I mean, the, the Anthony went to prison for rape with Sharice. And a 15-year-old girl. That's how he ended up rep as a registered sex offender. We all know that. And then Sharice, because of what her husband was doing. See, I lived my daughter's life with her. And some secrets she could have kept, kept with you. And some, just like it's some secrets you know about her. And some secrets I know that she didn't share with you. And with her experience with that Anthony's thing. Well, you, you can't calculate what happened with her husband. The reason why she felt veered in that way. Because she knew he had went to jail. But she was homeless. She didn't have nowhere to go. And she was scared. And her husband went on Westpac. And so, from what I shared with my daughter, she ran to that man empty house for refuge because she didn't know where to go. I remember this. And then she, my daughter was living in fear. Mama, I don't know if this is my husband's baby or the rapist's baby. So I know what my daughter suffered. And then for the courts to say that Anthony was with her at birth, took Javon from Sharice's vagina and raised him while he was doing time in prison. And Teddy testified that it was true and so did my mama. That man wasn't in no dog on the let Javon life. And then the judge added his name to the birth certificate. So the man that raped my daughter got to be, be resurrected, had his name added to Javon birth certificate to legalize his position, and the rapist got a check for raping his, a woman, and he got the child back and the check, and didn't even have the kid. The system did this. So I ain't looking at what the people do. I'm looking at what the system do. And then I show the system, look what y'all doing again. Because the reason why Mama felt she could just easily do it and get away with it, because Monica Trent got away with it, and Alexis had seen not one penny of social security. But Monica Trent had us believing that Alexis' father was dead for seven years. I cried, prayed with that woman on the pretense that she lost both her children, Tamara and Maurice Simmons. But all that time, Maurice wasn't dead. Now, Tyree knew how to reach out to these guys, and there's a story behind how he connected with Anthony, starting with that nightclub, where he met him at the small world thing. Sharice go in the shop, Mama Tyree, do 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 met the same guy that raped me. Don't tell him, because Tyree will kill this nigga. Those were her words. So we kept that a grave secret. And in, in them grave secrets, got to put a bunch of niggas in the grave. But with all that said, that was a story, a backstory behind my children's walk and path in life. And I, as their mother, knew it and understood it. 
And could nobody tell their story better than their mama who was, was connected to their children. I don't care how hard the family tried to teach my children to dishonor me and disrespect me over the years. You don't have to listen to your mama. Forget what Noni have to say and don't listen to her. I got you. That's what they were reared to believe. Because the Bible say a child is like an arrow. Whichever way you shoot them, that's the way they will go. So my children were feared to dishonor their mother and not have to listen to her. And it became a part of their personality and character. Fine with me because I rendered them over to God. That's on my children to make their own decision. Thank God they came and repented and saw it in the end and got that cleaned up. Thank you, Lord, for that. But we have to look at character. When I was sitting at, when that judge said to me in Louisiana, is there one person that got anything, want something good to say about you? Not one person. Not one person said, no, this is her grandkids. This she is the grandmother. And Monica Trent took over my whole family, helped entourage. And this is these people that was on the outside looking in and say, wow, they don't got no respect for her. She must be a horrible person, so let me act like the maggots that they are. My family didn't represent me in strength and in power. They rendered me over, fed me to the lions, and manipulated it and had their way for whatever their agendas consisted of. And it consumed my grandbabies. Not only did my kids die, my grandbabies got lost and tossed to and fro. And it's amazing that, that now that they have, they're back in my employ. And the Lord has answered my prayers, and he's bringing that thing that I've been crying out for for 14 years to fruition and bringing it to its likeness and exposing it. Everybody want to reach out and say, oh, I didn't know that, I know that. But, but when we were trying to tell it, we were not heard. I, I was like a, a, a person in a soundproof room, and the people had on headphones because nobody cared then. And I don't understand why this is so significant now for people to, to dismiss all of that. Because this thing, I walked 14 years in pain and in agony and in misery, hurt and broken and confused and wondering where are the answers to the, where's the closure for my daughter? Where's the closure for my son? What happened to my grandbabies? Where are they? When I contacted my son, grandson, Jasir, that my sister raised, he checked me and chastised me and questioned me and drilled me with all of this persecution and interrogation. Oh, wait a minute. Hi, y'all. Uh, did you hear that? That's the question. How you doing? Oh, you going to make it through. Yeah. Regardless of whatever oh. thing somebody told uh, like you said, you got God on your side, and they can't stop him. It's just a trial, and it's just a test. And you come out victorious. I don't worry about what nobody got to say. What the dang going to do? They ain't the first person to lie on you, and they ain't going to be the last person to lie on you. But people take something so delicate and make it sound so simple and so such. Uh, people, it's hard to take three generations of lies, and that's so delicate. And make it appear it, like it's it, a it is. breeze it, in the it park. Is very much so delicate. I mean, I am mean, I think on this end, I had to, God knows, I had to, because I'm going to tell you something. This is what I learned. I love my mama, but my mama ain't worth me dying and going to hell and living to heaven because I got this anger and bitterness and hurt because I have to let Rena Bell go because Rena Bell, I'm sorry, but a whole bunch of areas, Rena Bell ain't right. And I know she ain't right. And she is what she is, but I'm like, I'm, like I said, you know what? You ain't worth me this bad because I'm angry because of what she did. You know, I, if you don't forgive me, you don't forgive me. But I'm not going to keep on holding this in against your little crazy stuff or too crazy. Because you, you hurt me too many times and you kept me in a mental space for too many years. And I'm not letting you hold me there no more. That is over with. You will not hold me there no more. Yeah, I've I, I been broke away from being a prisoner of mama's guilt. You know, I've always been a scapegoat. But when it upset my kids and my grandkids, that's when I was torn, really torn and ripped up. That tore the veil from me and ripped my soul in half. 
because my grandbaby next finna be 28 years old and she lost. Sharice is lost. Right now, they both are now beginning to heal, and they're just starting to heal from 2008. Sharice got to, Lexus got to start healing from 08, and Sharice got to heal from 2022. 14 years between these bookend grandbabies whose life was stricken and saddened by the agenda of greed and manipulation and hate and lies and deception. You know, I look at my, I look at my, uh, Red called me the other day and was telling me, oh, your granddaughter was here and your great-granddaughter. I'm like, I don't have a granddaughter and a great-granddaughter. I don't have a report with Alicia and her grand, her daughter because I said Alicia was taught that I killed her mother. And when I did finally reach out and we finally connected 10 years after her mama's death, she asked for my side of the story. And I could only gently spoon feed her a little bit at a time. And when she asked me direct questions, I gave a direct answer. And her response to me was whatever, Winona, because she has already been brainwashed or gaslighted into believing the narrative, the homemade narrative. Well, and then when Jasiri asked me, well, well, what happened to my granddaddy? Well, would you, you know, he's questioning me about the death of his great grandfather that he never knew, and his uncle, everybody, knew. and then his auntie. So why am I answering to my grandchildren about the death of family members when I got a whole sister that runs a whole congregation that have my grandbabies in her midst? that didn't tell them the truth. So why are they deceived and harsh toward me? Because if I was in this for love, I'd be like, that's your grandmother, and we had to divide you, we, you were divided, and we, the goal was to keep y'all together, but that's your father, I'm your father. Instead, division was constantly implied and negative. And Terry had every reason to be angry and upset because he saw the manipulation. But my son was misled by the manipulators and wouldn't listen to his mama. And I, I, like I told my son, I know my sisters and brothers better than you. You look to them because they, they're your aunties and uncles and they were your saviors. But I changed their diapers. And I know they hearts. I knew they hearts before they did. And so if you follow them instead of the word of God, and all I could do is tell you which way to go. But my children made their own elective decisions to follow the, 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 the negative. I don't have to listen to my mama. I don't have to listen to her. Huh? Every member of my family is guilty of that. Thank the way called me and repent. So did PJ. No, only I was wrong for that. But they hoard their children. They cover their children. Make sure their children don't get misled. But they misled man straight to the grave. Nobody calculating the collective picture and looking at the end results. I say I tried to sacrifice myself to the Louisiana. I said, y'all, to have me, I'll do life. Do y'all see what y'all getting ready to do to these kids with the lies? Y'all get ready to hurt my grandbabies. Keep them together, and I'll sit in your prison. And they let them get ripped apart and destroyed. And not one family member sought to keep my grandbabies connected. And the reason they couldn't, because they had their own agendas. So everybody's hand was dirty in the pot. And the thing that's so strange to me today is that I, from that point in my life to, to this very day, I have not heard from my family in all these years. I heard from them, I bumped into them at a funeral, hear that? But I have not been connected with my family since I moved out here in 1984. We had spurts, spontaneous contacts, and nobody knew how the other person's life was going except for what they heard through the grapevine. We wasn't in and out of here. I might have visited you two times since you've been in the, between Louisiana and, and, and Houston in and, and, and 40 years. And not one brother, 
Not one sister, not a father, a mother. Only had one cousin that was Lisa and Chicken because they lived out here that I came in contact with since 1984. Ever touched my dough in California. You stayed with me, transitioning, and never looked back. And when I first got here to San Diego, Red and Woody stayed with me because they were stationed out here in the military for just a month or two to get on their feet, and they never looked back. And from that point on, I never dealt with family, but they narrative got me locked up in prison and my grandbaby separated and did nobody fight to keep them together. And if it was the other way around, the fight and battle that I suffered to get my grandbabies back connected, I would have did the same thing for your children. I wouldn't have let your babies get mishandled knowing that it was a lie. And it wasn't no, that's between that person and God. I ain't getting any. That ain't my business. I would have fought for the well-being, the truth of your child, knowing that they were going down the structure because me and you suffered mama's wrath of greed. So we know what she's all about. So why leave some innocent children in the wilderness to be devoured, knowing how, how, it, how it gutted us? We were overtaken. You said you're not going to go to hell for mama's choices. I came from under mama's web in prison of being incarcerated to her guilt if things didn't work out for her when it came to that monetary unit. So I ran from that. And so did you think my grandbabies was going to be able to survive that out there on their own? It was just like Alexis and Sharice was dropped in the Congos with a bottle of water and told them, y'all figure out how y'all going to survive. And they in there with the lions and the giraffe and the tigers and the cheetahs, and they dropped in the middle of the jungle. That's how my grandbabies got played, but I would have laid my life down for your kids, Carla. I wouldn't have never let it happen. And if Nug, if Aunt Clara and Aunt Mammy was alive, my babies wouldn't have never got separated because they would have took that man and said, what did y'all talk about? Gee, the grandmama. Do, 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 do. Uh, how uh, you say that because that's your point of view and you have that right to say that. Now, that was my experience. No, you don't know what was going on mentally with me and me trying to get my life and my mind together. I wasn't right to take care of nobody. <laughs> but I did not see her in the street. I did not see her. No, Paul, I'm talking. No, 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 no. You, you on, a, on a secular level. I'm somewhere else with it. I'm talking about collecting me, the whole big picture. What I mean by taking care of seeing about them being placed in the right position even though you had all these things going on in your life you knew that those children were being displaced misused abused and it was all about a dollar and, and just deception it was all about just evil and wickedness and you saw it but didn't try to fix it that's, that's what I'm behooved about. And I don't understand the purpose today to even have this conversation because the conversation would have been done, with, would have went over well when I was on trial. So somebody would have told the truth, but everybody came with a narrative and a lie. Everybody that took their stand. But Paula, I didn't, you didn't have to have anything to do with telling the truth on behalf now you saying i will supply you with a document saying that you are i needed that document when i got sentenced for kidnapping some kids that y'all knew wasn't kidnapped when that happened with sharice noni i wasn't even in no right space i was you nobody knew where i was living i was living me and my kids was living in the car and i couldn't even take care of myself and i didn't even know what was going on with you i, I can't be as far as that part is, I didn't even know all of, like a lot of the stuff that you're telling me. And you can ask your, your, your granddaughter that's living in a house with you. When I, her being here, I just learned of all these depth things was going on. I was trying to find myself because I was out in the streets myself. And when when I when I saw what happened with Sharice kids, I, I, in, in my mindset, I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something to make it right because my family is not doing my kids like they did Sharice kids because I don't trust them because I no and I didn't, I never trusted that my mama would be a part and do no my mama would have took them just for money too. 
So I eat. But my mindset, what was going on, I was trying to get my mind and my life together. Because I wasn't everything. My life wasn't right. And I wasn't focused. So how could I be concerned? I got two kids. I live by myself trying to do it. And don't even know what I'm doing. So how am I going to take on somebody else's kids and be, I, my mind wasn't there. And, and just like you, my mind wasn't there. No, I didn't have the mentality to, to uh, get it together at that time as far as like, where my mentality is right now. I just have that same mentality to get together because back then, when Sharice passed, I didn't even have it together. So, I mean, and, and no, it, and, and as, even more since I found out things, no, I didn't agree with it. I never agreed with it. And I can't sit up and say, oh, I agree with it. I might didn't, um, I couldn't, how am I going to do something about that, something that already had happened? And I that, and it was years later when I found out the truth and the depths of everything that was going on. And well, what am I supposed to do about it? How can I do about it when the damage was already done? Whether right. I agree with it or, or not. But if nobody cared for the detail then, I don't understand why it's, con it's a concern today. I, I, I don't get, you know, I keep seeing, you know, while you were talking, I had a flashback uh, when we got to the cemetery. Everybody was surrounded. We was all heading to Auntie Rudy House for the repast while we was trying to decide. My man was set on riding back to Ohio with Dura with four kids. We're scratching my head on what we going to do. Can't leave Dura with all these babies by herself. I got to, I got folks, so I'm going back to Sandy, uh, back to Ohio with Dura. Got to get the house together and figure out what we going to do. How we going to work this out with these kids. And I, my PJ pulled me to the side and all the cars was riding out and I seen Teddy Roller. Javon and Alexis were standing at their mama casket. And me and PJ walked over there to them. I, I, I just didn't know what to do. And watched them just standing there looking at their mama casket. And all the cars was pulling off. Alexis and Javon were left at the cemetery with their mama's dead body. And they were left behind and wasn't nobody there but their grandma to grab them. And when we got to Auntie Rudy's house, the story continues. But I keep remembering, keep seeing how they were just left at a cemetery. And then Teddy pulled up. With his blah, 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 we're going to do this, going to do that. How you come in here deciding which the way these kids was going to go when you wasn't even in your daughter's life? You left her when she was three. And how would you come with her children to make decisions about the path of her children when nobody seen or heard from you in 24 years? And, but my family didn't support that. Everybody was making decisions against Sharif's kids because they forgot that Sharif had a mother named Winona. And before I knew it, all kind of stuff was going on over my head. Even my son trying to set his brother-in-law up to have him killed. I didn't know what to think because nobody calculated that Noni was burying her third child. Because the man lived for six hours when I was on Claremont. So because he not like what well, y'all don't might not remember that. And I said, baby, I him before. I named him. He lived for six hours. So it was Latrice, then the man, and then I'm burying Sharice. Now I'm buried Tyree. Imagine all your kids dead and gone, Paul. You can't imagine it. And because it's not happening to you, nobody ever felt my sex. And like I was just walking around in a, with a straight mind. I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Why are the kids being separated at the cemetery? For real. People saw a glimpse of what they wanted to see, and your, 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 your position is valid. You was going through your own thing, so your focus wasn't chimed in to my scenes. And because of that, that's all the more reason why not one family member should have a tongue against me, because they wasn't involved in my scenes. It wasn't their kids dying. It was mine, and it wasn't, but, and I think it's another thing, if I insure your kids, Paula, yeah, just because I pay for the policy, that money is mine, but if I insure your children, something happened to you, at minimum, then I got 
thousand dollars off one of your kids, Paul, and they struggling. You don't think I'll say about your babies? They, they yield, they yielded me some good money. So you go, you know what? Because I had your babies insured. You know what? Let me put $25,000 over here in that little escrow account for you can let it draw interest on when they turn 18. They'll have something. Because it was because of the death of their parents. The reason I got this $750,000. Let me put $25,000 for one of these kids. Let me sow a seed. Because you know, in ministry, we sow seeds. Let me sow a seed into my deceased niece children and leave them something. Because on account of me, I got all of this. Let me bless her, but you know what? They didn't think like that. They sold it to their own seeds. And you know, it, it, it seemed to me that I, I just see things starting to crumble against the lives of the wicked. Because the description, anytime um, I went to the Social Security just uh, last week, and Social Security questioned my addiction, my drug abuse, my prison record, and I, I, I cannot be a Lexus, uh, I mean, Charisse's uh, financial uh, provider, because they have, an, I said, when do Social Security have a prison record? Just say, well, you wouldn't do, 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 do. I said, man, be look at that record, because I'm a woman, not a man. Y'all need, but have you been? I said, How, do I look like a man to you? Because I refuse to directly answer that question because that prison mess is a lie. And it shouldn't be held against my character. Because I was falsely thrown in prison because of the power of authority and the pen. Monica Trent, FBI. Alexis' mother-in-law and father-in-law, CIA. So they, they got my daughter insured for big insurance policies too. And so why would my daughter hug and raise his children to believe that the Lexus and Duval, them not your real brothers and sisters. So you're going to desensitize her to feel like don't even think about them. That's, that they don't exist. Why would you raise the children to believe such, such a handy relationship when you knew the truth? Unless you hiding something. And then I still don't understand to this day what possessed mama to run to the social security office and apply for a check for Cherie when Cherise was with me. I flew home and got my granddaughter. When my mama flew in on her birthday, she went straight to that INSA office and applied for a check. Why? When she knew that the intention was for me to bring her back to California with me. So why would mama needed to collect the check knowing the child was with me? And I'm trying to figure out what I got to do. And I'm moving from Ohio. I had to move from Ohio. Sharif, me and Sharif and TJ went and moved from Ohio because mama couldn't respect the reason why I needed to bury my son on a certain day because I went through the VA and they had, I was in a shelter. She didn't nobody know my business. So they assumed that I was just from, sitting around fumbling my phones waiting for something to happen. But I got that $7,500 and I was in the shelter to move into my place. I was relocating from Ohio back to California. And Calvin was like, Mama, get a three bedroom because I'm coming. Do, 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 do. So I did that. I, so on October 31st, I said, I got to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Blah, 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 blah. Because I got to be out of my place in Ohio by no later than the 3rd of November. So I knew what I business I had on the table. I had to get my butt out of Ohio and shut Ohio down in order to transfer my voucher back to Daco. The day they awarded me the grant, granted me the money, a couple hours later, Tyree's dead. So the system, like, because of this, this unusual circumstance, we're going to give you a week. I said, I don't know what's in front of me. I ain't going to be going to bury my son be back in a week. I don't got money. I don't know what's in front of me. I don't know what my son, he got insurance, whatever. So they said, well, we're going to give you two weeks. So I had to be back by that Thursday, the 17th of doggone November, in order to keep, keep my deposit to transfer, to move back to California from Ohio. Now, because I needed to bury Tyree on a Tuesday to be back here by that Thursday, the best day was Tuesday. I said, wow, that's even perfect because, you know what, for my memories, my twins was born on a Tuesday. I'm going to bury my son on the fir on that first Tuesday available. And that first Tuesday available happened to fall on the 15th. And then my family took that like I had made a cardinal decision against mama's birthday. No, it was for the convenience of my life. Now, I ended up getting set back, lost the, the, the doggone deposit. That 7500 
$28 went down the drain because I extended myself for two months. It took me two months to get my son in the ground dealing with family, playing mind games because Noni doing this spitefully. No, Noni was doing what she had to do for her convenience. And then I end up at the end, me and Sharice and TJ went to Ohio and packed my apartment up, got a U-Haul, and drove my truck back to Michigan. And we had to do it with three vehicles. It's me, TJ, and Sharice. Sharice can't drive. So we got to figure, we drove Tyree car up there and got the U-Haul truck. It took us the whole weekend to load that truck and move all my stuff from Ohio to Tyree house. And I got to figure out how I'm going to get it to California. Because I blew my opportunity because the family said I was being malicious because I needed to bury my son on the first available Tuesday because I knew that on the 11th that I needed, I told the people that gave me a week extension that I would have the stuff out of there between the 11th and the 12th, which fell on a Saturday and a Sunday. The calendar proved my truth and my son went and helped me do it. So I kept my word to them people. I couldn't bury him on no 11th or 12th because I had to be in Ohio to unload that house or my voucher wasn't going to transfer and I had to take pictures. I wasn't going to lose my housing trying to play games with family that didn't understand my position. That's all they did was do one dagger at me after another. And then when I did get here, I had to start all over here. But God, but God, and I had to sleep in my rental car trying to make a way. Ran in the Margo, she died. She offered me a place to stay for them little few days that I thought I was going with. We ended up almost two weeks before I moved in where I'm at. And there was some mess with her. You got my car, my money, our social security to help. Supposed to have stopped the money because the money was for me to meet uh, the social security check that I told Michigan not to let move until my granddaughter was established or some documents on her. The goal was for me to get a roof over Sharice's head. So when I did, when she did, when I did get her here in California, she had a place to stay. I wasn't trying to have that baby sleeping in the car with me. I needed to make sure that she was established so when she got here, she had a door to walk straight through <laughs> and not be stressed out. And Margo was uninhabitable. Her conditions of living was uninhabitable. And that's another story that's documented. Margo and her drugged out son, they all messed up. Enough is enough.